No one at school is going to have a pencil pouch like mine. Except me. Except you. <laughs> Awesome free project. I'm going to just film it really fast because I've got one more to make. I guess I should turn so you can read. I inherited both of the button jars from my grandmother's. So I have lots of free buttons. And um, so my pencil pouch is completely free. It's scrap fabric from making my sister some pants. And it may not look it, but this is actually a durable denim. So that's really cool. And um, we're going to make sure we cut on the fold. So this is doubled fabric, but if you have a notebook, all I did was make it, you know, within like an eighth of the inch of each of the edges. And I had it come out, you know, three fourths of the way on one side. This is not a measuring type of project. I'm eyeballing it. You don't have to do this next step, but it will decrease the odds of fraying threads getting caught in your zipper. So I put back on the normal presser foot and I'm going to zigzag down the side. So there's like a gap beyond where the zipper is and you don't want a big hole in your project. So we're going to lift up like the ends of the zipper and pull them out like that. Let the presser foot down. Gonna just go right over that. Make sure they're lined up. That gives us a nice edge. So the zipper, and then it goes down to just being closed fabric. So I've done both sides, and I just wanted to show you know, you wanna reinforce this part on both sides, is you know, it's getting the most pressure. That's where it's getting opened and closed a million times. So, um, what I'm going to do, you could do it with the machine, but it's really hard to get to the spot because this is where the, the bulky ends of the zipper are, even with the zipper foot. I find that challenging. So I'm going to turn this over and I am going to go in, just figure out right where that spot is. I'm going to pinch it on the other side and I'm just going to put in a few extra stitches with a uh, needle and thread. Going to use a lot of good old-fashioned needle and thread in this project so if you don't like hand sewing it's probably not that project for you or you at least want to skip out on the embellishments <laughs> okay it doesn't have to be like a million stitches but that is enough to take the pressure off of that section and then i'm going to tie off and then you have a decision to make are you making just a plain pencil pouch or do you want to add some embellishments like the one I showed you at the beginning I'll just grab that again has uh, my daughter's nickname on it it has Izzy on there and I did it in buttons I also I was going to do you might notice that we're not at my fun craft area that's because we have a giant plumbing mess going on in my basement I was going to do iron-on embellishments that I got eons ago at the dollar store and I was all excited about finally using these things for something and then I remembered that my ironing board is covered underneath like a million rolls of fabric at this point because we had to move everything for the pipes and it's a big nightmare. So, ah! Anyway, so I moved on to buttons. <laughs> Crafting, you gotta be flexible. So I'm going to pick some buttons, but by any means you could skip this step. Um, but this is what you look like at this point. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a moment and pick out some buttons. I'm gonna do just a big W on this one. You wanna make sure that you're leaving room for the holes that you're gonna be putting on the bottom of the binder and don't go all the way up to the edges because we're gonna be tucking those under and sewing them. So just try to stay in the middle if you're doing an embellishment. You could do iron-ons like I talked about. You could do fabric shapes and like sew letters on and scrap fabrics. I mean, sky's the limit here. Or you could just leave it plain and be really fast. Anyway, I've put my buttons pretty much how I want them to go. It's not going to be exactly this way. I was getting kind of my shape. And then I'm going to take a Sharpie and I'm going to go draw a line where I was. I'm moving the buttons in the process. So it's not going to be that exact order of buttons because it'll be buttons that kind of fit in that shape by the time I'm done. 
Anyway, so you can see I drew myself in Sharpie a W for Winnie. And once again, I'm not very close to the edges or the bottom. So this step's kind of tedious, and I realized in hindsight, and I forgot again, even though this is the second one I'm making, that this step would probably be easier to do first before you put on the zipper, but you know, maybe you'll remember. I didn't either time. So I've got my knotted thread, and I'm just gonna, you have three areas you can go through. You can go through the top or either of the sides. So it still is pretty easy to put the buttons in. And I'm just gonna start at the top of my W, right where my line was, and grab a button. And these are not usable buttons, like you're not going to be, you know, using them as any sort of closure. So you don't have to worry about making a shaft on the back of the button. You can go straight to the fabric and do it, I'd say, three or four times. It's not, you know, the kids are probably going to play with it. That's probably going to be what would make them fall off. They're not really going to be used. So doing that three or four times. And then we're going to go in and tie it off. It's going to be pretty ugly on the inside, but you're never going to see it because I'm going to continue. I'm going to tie off and I'm just going to go straight on to the next button. So I'm going to push the needle through a ways down, grab another button. Once again, I don't know what it looked like a minute ago, but it, it's going to look different now probably. And then that'd be really freaky if I chose the exact same buttons unknowingly. I don't think I did though. So you get the idea. We're going to sew all the buttons on. So I am done sewing on my W. Winnie! And I'm turning the thing for just a second and I'm going to make sure we're going to be turning in the sides and stitching them under. But I want to make sure just to eyeball it right next to it to make sure I don't go too short. So I'm turning in some fabric here. And when I do that, I'm still past the binder edge, but I might want to go a little bit less so it's not too short. So since I didn't give you exact measurements, this is not an exact, like I can't say, and turn in half an inch. So turn in whatever amount you have to do to still go past the binder clip, like where you'll have room to do all your holes. And you could pin this. Oh, once again, you will have a much easier stitch if you start at the edge that's not where the zipper is. It's thicker where the zipper is. It's like twice as much fabric. So if you start at the other end, you'll just be able to sew right up to the thick point. I'm lining up with the hole in the presser foot, but not really an exact science if you haven't caught on yet. So whatever's probably fine. If you wanted that to be really sturdy, you could even sew over it twice. But since I've never had a school bag last more than a year, I don't really care if this lasts more than a year, especially since it was free. But if you want it to last longer or if you're using this for something other than a pencil pouch, you know, it would obviously be stronger with more stitches. So we did that and we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Grab that Sharpie again. You got your side sewn. The next step is another going to be by hand sewing step. I've lined this up with the rings, the binder rings, and I'm going to go in like, I don't know, would you say that's like a, a third of an inch? Not quite half of an inch. And I'm going to draw a little dot. It's not quite a pinky for me from the binder thing. Cause you don't want to be so close. You see how I have like a gap on this one. Like it's, you gotta have room so your hole doesn't cut into the edge of your project. And we're just gonna fold it right on the dot. And very scientifically cut a little notch out. As in not so scientifically. Okay, not quite big enough. So we're going to try again. It's uh, better to go like the side to side width because that way it has room if you don't get your holes all like perfectly lined up with the binder ring. It has kind of some slide in it. So I've got a needle and thread and I knotted the end and I'm going to go in to the project for a second just so the big ugly knot kind of goes in. And then we're simply going to be going 
You could probably zigzag this on your sewing machine, but it's such a small area that I just thought it would be easier to do it by hand. And it doesn't take too super long, especially if you're watching TV, which makes any sewing project seem less tedious or time absorbing. And I would go around, ooh, ouch, got myself. That's what I get for looking in the camera. Um, I would go around two or three times because normally when you buy a binder or um, a pencil case, this piece is metal. So you want to make it as strong as possible because it's going to have the tendency to want to, just like a buttonhole, it's going to want to go past it. So we're going to go around like two or three times just to give it a nice stay border.